Hey everybody, welcome to another tutorial from B Dub Records. I'm Bill Witt here today talking about in the box mastering. Now, in the box mastering is mastering that happens completely inside your computer, inside the DAW environment. Now, my previous tutorials on mastering have received a lot of views. In fact, when you total up all the uh, views from my videos on Adobe Audition, it comes up to something like 70,000. So, a lot of you are interested in how to uh, master on the cheap. And uh, for Adobe Audition, you'll recall with that video, it costs just a few hundred dollars. Now, in today's video, we're going to take it up a notch and we're going to go to Waves plugins inside the Pro Tools environment. And that's going to cost several thousand dollars. But wait, don't tune out just yet if you don't have that kind of money or those kind of plugins, because we're going to find some tips that apply to just about anyone using any DAW or any plugin whatsoever. The environment is still the key. So you can have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of hardware, of software, but if you're not hearing everything right, uh, then you're not mastering correctly. So we need to have a good environment, acoustic treatment, we need to have the right monitors, and now in our studio we have uh, three different monitoring environments. You'll see that in a lot of studios, multiple sets of monitors. And my primary one is these uh, Roland Active monitors. Then I have a secondary output coming out of the Project Mix I.O that goes to some Klipsch monitors, and then a third that goes to these headphones. All right, we're sitting down to work in the Pro Tools 9 environment. I realize a lot of you guys don't have 9 yet. That's okay. In fact, as I record this, it's not even shipping yet. Um, but all DAWs work basically the same, and these principles will apply to you no matter what you're using. And as you can see, 9 looks really similar to 8 in the way it's laid out in functions anyway. So let's just have a look at our first track. We'll be mastering two tracks today. First is an acoustic piece that I also mixed, and the second is a, a rap piece that was emailed to me for mastering. So because I mixed the first one also, let's just have a real brief look at the whole picture of the mix. So we got some audience mics. As you can see by the EQ, I'm rolling off a lot of the lows. Then we got our drum set. Got some basic EQ, some reverbs and things like that going on. Putting a good reverb on your snare always makes the kit sound so much better. Let me disable that. See how much cheaper the snare sounds with no reverb? Just a little bit of reverb goes a long way. All right, let's have a look at the next instrument. It's the bass guitar. I'm using a uh, Waves Max bass on it, along with uh, another Waves plugin from the JJP Signature Collection, just to give him some more sustain. He played it in a really staccato way, which didn't fit well with this song, so I wanted to just lengthen and sustain his notes a little bit if I could. And next we got the dulcimer, which is pretty much what makes this track really distinctive. The dulcimer is filling up the very high spectrum. We don't want it muddying up the lows, which belong to the kick drum and the bass guitar. So we got that, and then we added just a little touch of reverb. Then we got the electric guitar, which is very uh, non-distorted and kind of the background in this type of a mix. Then we've got the acoustic guitar. For the acoustic guitar, I've actually used another Renaissance EQ from Waves just to shape the sound a little bit. As you can see, also, we rolled off the bass in that. And then we got the vocal. The vocal I've got going through Aunt Aries. I know there are a lot of Aunt Aries haters out there who might comment, but it's a really good kind of insurance policy, if you will, if he ever gets a bad note. I'm trying to do this in a transparent way. I will seek you in the morning. Not like that. We're not giving him the T-Pain effect. So <laughs> transparent is the way to go there. And then we've also got a compressor on him and a multi-band compressor. I really like to do that on the lead vocals because it just makes him sit really well in the mix and come to the front. Okay, and our track is ready to bounce down and through the magic of YouTube. It is bounced down. So just like that, we're back inside Pro Tools. This is a new session that I've set up called Mastering. And basically up top here, we've got the song we just bounced down. And that sounds like we'd expect it to. Let's solo the bottom track. Below it, I've put a reference track for what it should sound like. The morning, and I will learn to walk in your way. 
So of course we noticed that it's faster, nothing we can do about the tempo at this point, but we also noticed that it's a lot brighter. So if you listen to the reference and look, check it out on this. We saw a pretty flat frequency response between 125 and 16 kilohertz. And uh, if you compare that to our track, you're gonna see that it's a lot duller. Our track on the yellow line is at about negative 20 at 125, and then all the way down to negative 60 by the time you get to 16 kilohertz. So in other words, our track that we produced is very dull, and it just kind of lay, lays dead as you get to the higher frequencies. We're gonna have to excite that if we're gonna make it more like a commercial recording. So the first plugin that I've added for mastering is the Linear Phase EQ by Waves, and this is like any other parametric EQ, but it's highly sophisticated in ways that I can't describe in the time limits of this tutorial. But one of the best things about it is this right here, the resonant shelf it creates. And so when you add a high shelf like we're doing um, above six, excuse me, above five kilohertz, it creates this little peak right here and this little valley right here called a resonant shelf. And you can adjust how much of that it does with your cue control. And that's very much like the old analog consoles used to do. Let's have a listen. I will learn to so you can tell with your ears <laughs> that we're getting a lot closer to that brightness we're going for. And check it out up here on the display. If I didn't mention it before, this is the Waves PAZ Analyzer. Helps you see visually what you're hearing. And as you can see, that is getting where we want it to be. Unfortunately, it irritates my ears just a little bit. So I added a second plug-in to take care of some of the irritating frequencies we brought up. We're taking out with this one a little bit more of the mud around 30 hertz, just a, a little tiny boost, but a great attenuation. I know what you're thinking, how can you boost and attenuate 30 hertz? Well, with this you can. This is an emulation of the famous uh, Pultec EQ. It's very expensive, very highly sought after, and it does this weird thing where you can boost and attenuate the same frequency, so you're kind of adding it, but taking away the mud that comes with it. And at the top end, I've boosted a little bit at five kilohertz for presence, and then attenuated everything beyond 10 kilohertz. Um, and I know again what you're thinking, why did you just boost everything above five kilohertz and now you're attenuating everything above 10 kilohertz? I know it's kind of weird, but that's how mastering goes. You use different EQs for different functions. And this JJP signature collection emulation of the Pultec EQ really acts like the piece of hardware, like if you had a hardware rack. And it's, it's odd, I never thought that I'd like it, but I do and the results speak for themselves. Listen. I will learn to walk in your ways and step by step. Okay, now we're gonna add one more, one last plugin, that is the Waves Linear Phase Multiband. Again, a very, uh, I don't know what you'd call, a very sophisticated piece of technology uh, beyond the scope of this tutorial, but as you can see, it has allowed us to EQ some more brightness in there but at the same time, give it this blue space here, which is the freedom it has to compress those frequencies. So we're gonna add brightness without getting irritating. So you can see when we're working with um, a normal piece of program material, it's gonna be pretty bright. But when something like a snare kit or a dulcimer chime comes through, it's gonna compress that so it's not irritating. So again, if we look at our readout, we are definitely getting somewhere. There's the 125, there's 16 kilohertz, and we are almost even, just like our reference track. At this point, you wanna put back on your headphones, try out your different monitors. Now, obviously, we're not gonna sound as good as a commercial recording, but we're getting a lot closer to what uh, it should be sounding like sonically and EQ-wise. Now, as far as the dynamics go, check out our tracks. This track has a lot of transients that are poking up beyond the meat of the track. The meat of the track is this dark green part right here. Look at the reference recording. Look at how big the meat of that track is. And the transients are just barely poking through. So we've got to limit those transients to give room for the, the real part of the track to be louder. So we're going to do that with the latest and greatest thing from Waves. This is called the L316. Now as we start to bring the threshold down, it's gonna compress those little transients that exceed the threshold level. 
but it's gonna limit them in an intelligent way. So if you watch our graph over here, when the kink drum hits, it only limits right here. And when the snare hits, it only limits right here. So it's a very cool thing that it leaves your track intact while limiting those transients in a very intelligent way. Now you can push this a, a, a very good amount without destroying your tracks. This is a way to get that really loud feel that a lot of pop music has. For this, I'm just gonna basically have the levels just kiss that threshold just a little bit. We don't want this to be limited beyond recognition. Then when we take the output up, All right, so that is our first track, an acoustic track. Now we're gonna move on to the second, which is rap. And in this genre, it requires us to use these same tools in a completely different way. And especially with this project, you can see up here that he sent me uh, the project in stems. This first stem is the beat, which we can hear here. That's the chorus, and then out here, the verse leaves room for his vocals, which is the I second stand. All right, so we have uh, the first problem that I see in evaluating this program material is that the first stem has already been mastered pretty much. If you look at the levels, they're already banging their head against zero dB. They've already seen a lot of compression, a lot of limiting, and a lot of EQ. So obviously, I can't do a whole lot with this. The, if I master something that's already been mastered, it's just going to create a train wreck. So I'm not going to do a whole lot with this. With the vocals, which are a little bit more raw, but still coming in a little hot, I can do some things. Um, now, the first thing I want to do is tuck them in to the beat. Because the beat's already been mastered, getting them inside that beat is a little bit tricky because it's already very square, the waveform, and if I add that to it, then his vocal is just going to pop out above that square and kind of ruin the mastering effect that's already there. So what I've done is I've routed his vocal to bus one through the sins there, and you can see I've turned up his level just above zero dB. And then I've used bus one on this compressor as the key input. So right there I've just selected bus one and turned on the keying effect. So basically what's happening here is that if you look at his vocals, they are compressing the beat. Right there. So basically, it's compressing the beat by up to two decibels. Not very much, but it's enough so that when he gets louder, the beat gets softer just a little bit with a very fast attack time to give the illusion that he is part of that track that's already been mastered. Now, the second part of the equation is making his vocals sound like the vocals that are already part of the track. So the track sounds like this. That's the chorus, if you call it, the singing. Now the rapping, we want to sound as much like that as we can, EQ-wise. So basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a few uh, EQs, just like last time. This first one is the Poltec simulator. And I just added some of the 12K boosted that and attenuated just a tad uh, of 20 kilohertz. Then I've added this linear EQ, the linear phase EQ to add some more brilliance up here. And my favorite, finally, the multi-band compressor, which is just going to tame some of the S's. So you can see the multi-band compressor is only active right up here and it's only taking care of those S's, so it's like a real complex de-esser. Now the last thing I did was add a doubler because I just like the way this track sounds when it's a little fatter when his vocals are doubled. So I really like the way that turned out and that's actually where I stopped. Part of good mastering is knowing when to stop. And because this has already seen so much mastering work, I didn't add the L316, I didn't add a lot of other limiting. I just let it be right there. So I like it. And that's exactly how you would use a mastering effect. Not too much, but just enough to get something where you're wanting it to be. 
Well guys, that's it for this tutorial. Hope you learned something and hope you learned that you really can do some really cool mastering in the box without having a whole rack of hardware. Now if you guys want me to do some mastering for you, just email uh, mastering at bwrecords.net and I'll give you all the details, all the price breakdown and all that. And if you're my friend or subscriber on YouTube, you get the first one free. So check that out and we'll see you next time.